All right, everybody, this is Ross. I thought uh, in today's video, we would really talk about in-ground fig trees. We're gonna have a, a number of videos over the next couple weeks talking about the in-grounds. Uh, we've talked a lot about the, uh, the potted figs for a while and I've been trying to update you guys on these in-ground trees. Um, the low tunnel situation, update you guys on that as well. So we have to go through all of that, talk about the low tunnels. At least in the meantime, um, I want to talk about this standout tree first in that this here is Little Ruby and it really demonstrates, I think, it really proves my point on a number of points that I've been trying to make to you guys over the last, you know, three or so years in terms of growing them in the ground. We should be doing a couple of things. One is that if you have the option, you should grow it in the ground, I think. Two, if you, uh, you're gonna plant them in the ground, it's really a great idea, especially in our colder climates, our shorter season climates. Uh, people like in the Pacific Northwest, people in the Northeast really should be planting their fig trees above grade uh, for really a lot of us, because if we plant them above grade, we're gonna give them access to more heat. And that heat units are gonna compound over a length of time and really uh, actually produce figs at a much earlier date and at a much higher quantity. So any of that extra heat we give them in the beginning of the season, because the plants are above grade, they have access to more heat units in the soil. And I've talked about that for years. I've talked about the different experiments that I've done over the years and how we've, def we've definitely planted them at different heights to determine well, what is the most optimal height? Can I get away with planting them uh, a foot above grade? Can I get away with planting them six inches above grade? And I found that you can. You can plant them a foot above grade, and because they are now above grade, they just take off. You know, they really perform super well um, early in the season, and then it compounds later on. The real proof in the pudding though, I think is with this particular tree is that we talked about a few weeks ago, about a month ago maybe, we did a video comparing the potted trees to the in-ground trees. And I said that they're gonna ripen roughly at the same time. And that the myth of that them ripening about two weeks earlier because they're in a pot is just incorrect. And that by planting them in the ground like this above grade, you're really mimicking as if they were in a container. There's really no difference. And in fact, they're gonna ripen roughly at the same time. The truth of the matter is that not only did they ripen actually at the same time, but they're ripening about two weeks earlier than any of my potted trees. So it's been really incredible to see that a fig tree that has survived the winter with no damage. Our winter this year was so mild. I didn't even wrap this tree. I did prune it to thin out a little bit of the base, thin out a little bit of this growth so that it has a bit more sunlight and that it can set these fruit buds a bit easier. Um, but given all of that, the tree is producing about two weeks earlier than any of my potted trees that have received no head start. That's incredible. So it almost makes me think that, well, I should really be planting a lot of them in the ground. And even if I don't wanna do the low tunnel thing, or if I don't wanna grow them underneath the high tunnel, you know, my next best bet is just grow them in the ground and wrap them every year, get them through the winter time, and they're gonna produce extremely early. So this little ruby tree here, although it is a very early variety, I've definitely realized that it's extremely early. Um, it is producing early August for me, which is incredible. Um, I've already harvested about 20 figs off of this tree, if you can believe it. And there's more of them today. We're almost at mid-August right now. But as I said, in early August, this thing was just producing its first figs. And even before that, it was producing Breva. And historically, I've not been a great fan of this variety. 
uh, simply because the fruits are just so small. And, you know, I like Neruccio de Elba, it's quite a small fruit, but the fruits are very good. And I just realized that you guys couldn't really see in there. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's a little better. But Neruccio de Elba is at least very tasty. And even though it was small, I didn't mind it was small because it was tasty, but this little ruby here has been very, very good. I've been extremely impressed by the fruit quality this year. It's one of the figgiest figs I've ever eaten. Um, I would argue this is really, I think, a four out of five. It's, I think, a keeper. I think it performs really well. Um, I've been really impressed with it. And I know that I have done, I think, a small review on this, very briefly, a tasting review or something. And I've talked about this tree in passing a few times. Um, it really has changed over time. And I would, I would actually argue this is a great tree for a lot of people. Produces a Braba. And even with the Braba, by the way, it usually would slow down the main crop. But it hasn't. The main crop has been just as early as I, more than what I would have expected, even with that Braba. And uh, it's just producing like crazy. The figs are a lot bigger now. As this tree has been planted in the ground, it's been more established. The trees, the figs are like maybe even two or three times the size as they normally are, which is fantastic. Um, I still would argue it's a very low vigor variety. This is one of the truest dwarf fig varieties you'll ever see. I think it's incredible in that sense. And you know what? It would make a pretty good dwarfing rootstock. Is that, that's really why I kept it for years because I didn't think the fruit quality was great. But the, uh, believe it or not, it's such a dwarf that I thought it would make a really nice dwarfing rootstock one day. And uh, I actually think it's pretty good on its own. I mean, I actually feel really comfortable about spreading this variety around to people. I think it's probably very hardy, although it did survive the winter this year. I think it survived the winter another year, and it was significantly colder that year. So uh, I have to look at my records, but yeah, this variety overall just, as I said, very impressive. I could go into a lot of details about it, but the main message here, as I said, is that we should be planting these guys in the ground. They're producing earlier. And then if we grow them like we grow them our container fig trees, by planting them above grade, we're seeing so much more success, guys. And uh, again, it's all in that heat units. And you'll see right down in here that this is pretty much in a raised bed, you know? Again, it's a little shaded down there. I'll turn up the brightness. You can see those landscape bricks right there. And they have uh, basically been constructed and they enable this tree to pretty much be in a raised bed. It's about four inches high off the ground. There's rocks on top. All that excess heat in the spring, as I said, really adds up over the length of the season. And it enables that tree to actually produce figs earlier than any of these potted trees by quite a bit. Now I did get a dotado over here off of one of these very mature trees that a friend of mine gave me and they're producing on the tips on these apical buds rather than on a lateral bud and I think that also contributes to the fig being a bit early. So it's hard to say honestly if um, the in-grounds if I wrap them will produce earlier consistently than these potted trees. I don't necessarily, I'm not gonna make that claim just yet, but I will make the claim that they will produce at the very least at the same exact time as these potted trees. So you really have nothing to worry about in terms of planting them in the ground. If you have a spot, you have a warm, sunny, west, southern exposure, plant it in the ground there, guys. You're gonna be very surprised, I think, at uh, you know how well that tree does so that's my little just lesson you know these trees are I'm telling you they're doing so much better than these potted trees and there's so many other reasons too that they're just behaving so much better in the ground than they are in pots as well like the figs are just dramatically different on some of these varieties I've noticed um, 
it's hard to really explain. It's hard to really quantify and you don't really know until you grow the same variety, one in the ground and one in a pot. And you get to see and observe the differences between the two. If they were equally aged at the same, the same age, you would notice quite a bit of differences. It's really incredible. So that's this little video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm sure a lot of people agree with me and say, oh, dull, Ross, but you know, trying to get that, that message across to people that don't necessarily understand it or maybe are a little stuck in the ways of containers. And um, they see a lot of people do that. It's good for particular reasons, right? It has its purposes, but as I said, you could put something in the ground, I would. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you for the next one. Take care.